So I want to share a book with you today that I recently came across that I've really enjoyed, and I think a lot of you guys are going to find it helpful and will enjoy reading it. It's called Strategic Relocation, and the author's name is Joel M. Skousen. You can see here. He's an interesting guy. He has uh, was an a ex-military guy. Uh, I believe he was a carrier pilot. So if that, what does that tell you? Um, in addition to that, he has spent um, the majority of his career after being out of the military in consulting with people, uh, rich and famous, important people, on building strategic lo relocations, safe places, um, not only helping them to choose safe areas to live in, but also um, b constructions, you know, how, how to build uh, uh, something that can be safe from nuclear fallout or something that's not going to be manned, uh, that's going to be out in the country, how, how to sh steal shutters and what types of doors and what type of walls are bulletproof, you know, really some really high-end stuff. But what he's done in this book is he's really ro broken down uh, how to, uh, to give people information on how to choose a safe place uh, to, to relocate to. Uh, whether it be a primary residence or a secondary home or a cabin, but he goes over um, um, which country to select, which ones are, are the best. He, go over, he goes over each individual state, and I think that's my favorite part here. Uh, as you can see here, every state has got a, um, a rating. There's a five-star rating, zero being the worst and five-star being the best. So just we'll take California, for example, right here, uh, receives only a one-star rating. So, you know, why is that? He goes over, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go a cup, co cover a couple states here. Uh, population den density, cost of living, um, how strict are the building codes, uh, how much food can you grow there, uh, health environments, traffic, politics, whether they're friendly to homeschoolers, whether they're friendly to um, um, people who support the Second Amendment, you know, what's the state's attitude towards guns, um, how many nuclear power plants do they have, are there a lot of tornadoes in the area, you know, volcanoes, on and on, you know, all those things. We have to go to Colorado here, we have a four-star rating, that's on the higher end. Connecticut, a one star. You know, a lot of these get low stars just because of the way they're located, um, how hard they are to get out of. Florida, zero stars. Georgia, uh, but very well re researched. And then you can go on here toward the end. Uh, one of my favorite portions is where they have some really nice colored maps, and it breaks down the whole country as an area, and it shows primary and secondary nuclear strikes. You know, what portions of the country are going to be targeted uh, in times of war. It uh, covers a lot of uh, climate, uh, what you can expect here, nitrates in the groundwater, and then we go into the states. And this is kind of interesting. You can see here he's got all of the arrows uh, pointing out primary, secondary attacks. He shows areas that uh, have been uh, volcan volcanoes that have erupted in the last hundred years versus the last 1,000 years and, and kind of uh, where those are all located. You can see right here, broken down the Colorado, Wyoming area, these are all strategic missile sites um, that would be attacked, primary targets. Um, so obviously, you know, not, not an ideal place to live there, but uh, really well done. He has put a ton of work into it. This is actually the third edition, and um, I've got this one at the library. Um, so you can order them online and check out your state. You know, one thing that's really interesting, I, I think that he talks about, the, the biggest problem with a lot of these states is the um, egress of getting out of them. And I believe it was him, I don't know if I read it in this book or I heard it from an interview. Um, let's go to a state which would be, yeah, like Boston, for example. Massachusetts. Uh, one of the problems why, why these areas get such low ratings is that they're, they're so difficult to get out of. So he talks a lot about finding secondary routes. He talks about a lot about what have people, how have, how have they reacted in, in history uh, when faced with an oncoming army. And he gives several examples and has done a lot of study on what happened to Berlin in 1945 when the Russians uh, were coming um, to invade um, Germany. You know, what, did, were the, what did the people do? There, those who had cars took to the interstates. Those of you guys who study history know that it was the Autobahn uh, which Eisenhower took the idea from the Germans uh, to build our interstate system uh, based on that. 
uh, the, uh, kind of a, something that Hitler had laid out and implemented. And so that's where we got that. So they had the equivalent of our interstate system today. And, and what happened was uh, they took to the interstates. Uh, they shortly ran out of gas or broke down. Therefore, clogging the interstates, they weren't passable. Once they couldn't travel on the interstates any longer, they took to, to their feet. You know, where else would you go? And what happened was each side of the interstates, the areas when they were, where they were evacuating Berlin, the, the people on foot made it about uh, 10 and maybe some of them 15 miles, mostly between 5 and 10 miles. And everything both sides of those interstates was stripped. Uh, if it was a garden, uh, it was gone. If there were any livestock or any food in the farmhouses, it was gone. They absolute, the refugees absolutely decimated everything about 15, 10 miles or so, if I remember right, each side of the interstate. So a lot of thought is put into that when you're relocating um, not to be in those areas. One thing he he has um, some maps here uh, that I really liked was uh, population, which is kind of interesting. Let's see if I can find that. What I really like in here are the maps. Uh, here's some overviews of the U.S. primary threats. It kind of gives you an overview of, of where our main military targets are. And uh, I like this one here. This one shows the population density. I'm sorry about the light. I have a terrible uh, light, a situation here. Okay, so I could kind of speak to my area, just to give you an overview of what we're talking about. So you can see right here in the red areas, these are the highly dense, de dense areas. You can see Seattle and Portland and up and down the I-5 corridor here. This, this is the main artery, north and south. On interstates, if you didn't know this, the even numbers always run east and west, and the odds run north and south. So when you hear one, you have to have an idea. So... We have the I-5 north and south here, and the main artery east and west is Interstate 84. So these are going to be the primary places uh, where people, refugees, are going to be trying to get out. We've got the massive Cascade Ranges uh, that go through here, not coming up over the mountains, especially in the wintertime. All those passes are closed anyway, and most people are just not going to deal with it. They're going to go here or here. So when you're looking for a location, you want to be, well, sure that you are far enough away from these people that um, they're not going to come over and just overwhelm any resources that you have. You know, this particular area, you know, where, where we're in and here is nice because there's nothing but wasteland and desert from here. No one is coming from this direction. The only issues we have are probably from here, and Seattle's too far away. And the chances of these interstates being blocked off, and the, whether it be, let's say, uh, an earthquake, or it's going to take out all the bridges so they won't have access here anyway, um, but if it's man-made or military or, or war or whatever, uh, these interstates are most likely going to be roadblocked blocked and um, uh, commerce or just personal traffic is not going to be allowed anymore. So you know, that's the type of thing that, that Joel is trying to... Uh, wake you up to and just to make sure you're aware of it when you're choosing an area you know how hard is it to get to and and what type of a um, you know what are you going to deal with what where are all the people at so that's you know, some of my favorite portions and then we have he bro he's broken down into, into regions you can see here we have over here in the east and then texas and and this you know this the reason why that this area is so the states are rated so low in the book are um, just because of the, just the density of population and the small area. You know, you have you, you can't go any you can't get out to the to the east and and to the to the west here is is another country and all those borders and and water and a ton of people all trying to get out at one time. It's just a bottleneck. Uh, it's a real a real um, a problem. So those states don't receive very high ranking. And the same thing with Florida. I think Florida gets a zero star uh, for that same reason. There's just one way out and it all has to come here. And then once you do get out of here, uh, you have the mess of Atlanta or some of these other major cities that are uh, full of refugees also. So um, very well done. Uh, a tremendous amount of work went into this book. But let's go look at a couple states. Um, just for, for fun and some of the ratings. That's kind of my fun. Idaho. Um, where my family's from. Uh, five star rating. Um, you can see, you can read. I can't go through and read all these, but uh, just look at a couple of them. They're kind of fun. What else do we have to do, right? Illinois, one and a half. Indiana, two. Iowa, two. Kansas, two and a half. Kentucky, three. Louisiana, one. Maine, three. You know, so on and so forth. I think some of the better, the highest ratings are U Utah. We have Montana. Utah is one of the best states. 
Nebraska three starts, Nevada. All right, Utah gets five starts. And the one thing that uh, Joel talks about with the, the reason why Utah is rated so high is uh, it's just the way it's located. But just the fact that um, that's an awfully small map there. Well, he makes the argument that it's just there's wasteland all the way around it. No one's coming across the desert um, very easily through Colorado there or through Nevada or over the Rockies or to the south or to the north. It's, it's, if you've driven through there, it is, it is desolate. And then you have um, a lot of mountains and lots of natural water, water and, and a good growing season and, and on and on and on. You know, those are just some of the reasons why uh, it gets a high rating. So, you know, apart from having a nuclear missile dropping right on your head, it seems that he's mostly concerned with, here's Texas, uh, mostly concerned with, with refugees um, and what they're going to do. That, that seems to be the, the biggest concern um, for him and for the people who you know, have the ability to relocate their families and do something about it. But uh, a great book, and you can get it at your library. Sorry about the light there. Uh, that, there's Joel right there, and he uh, says here he served as a re relocation consultant for over 30 years. He's designed high-security residences, retreats. He's currently lead consultant and designer at the Secure Home Design Group. He has traveled widely and speaks, in, and I think I said he was a... If I remember right, he was a carrier pilot. So, uh, great book. Uh, fun just to kind of get get it from the library and just flip through it. Make sure you get the third edition. That's the that's the one that's most recent and most current. But um, uh, great book. So, hope you enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later.